Good afternoon, everyone. At this time, Lisa Young will take a roll call to see if a quorum is present. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the committee, when I call your name, please respond. Nancy Allen. Stan Ballone. Dave Barry. Ron Gritman. Here. Thank you. Walter Bouchard. Kim Butler. Here. Thank you. Derek Costaneda. Beverly Chanowski. Beverly Chanowski. Sam Brown. Sam Brown. Present. Thank you. Michael Denby. Scott DeBias. Here. Thank you. Robert Forrest. Here. Thank you. Liz Foster. John Woods. Here. Thank you. Rhonda Humbles. Here. Thank you. Hondo Judd. Michelle Kamikawa. Spencer Camps. Martin Lucero. Here. Thank you. Joe Martini. Amanda McGinnis, JC Porter. Here. Thank you. Danae Pressler. Mario Saldamondo. Here. Thank you. John Cheryl. Here. Thank you. Janet Kozinski, Susie Stevens. Here, present. Thank you. Ed Stillings. Steve Trussell. Kai Yumetta. Present. Thank you. Ann Murray. Amy Murray. Thank you. Uh -huh. Dina Konovka. Here. Thank you. Michelle Wilson. Here. Thank you. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you, Lisa. A quorum is now present. The meeting of the MAG Air Quality Technical Advisory Committee is called to order. All members are participating virtually. Please remember to mute when you are not speaking. If you are attending by phone only, press star six to unmute. We operate our committee meetings in full transparency, giving the public access to committee meetings, materials, and discussion. The public cannot view the chat comments. As a result, we are disabling the chat feature in all committee meetings moving forward. If you need technical assistance during the meeting, please contact the helpline at 602-452-5095 or contact MAG staff. We appreciate your understanding and helping to maintain transparent discussions for the benefit of the public. Moving on to agenda item number two, call to the audience. An opportunity will be provided to members of the public to provide input through written comment to the Air Quality Technical Advisory Committee on items that are not on the agenda that are within the jurisdiction of MAG or on items on the agenda for discussion, but not for action. Members of the public are asked to submit written comments related to this meeting through the MAG website at azmag.gov comment and indicate for which me meeting the comment is intended. 
Comments may be sent at any time leading up to the meeting, but must be received at least one hour prior to the posted start time for the meeting. Comments received prior to the deadline will be read aloud during the meeting. Comments must not exceed three minutes in length. A total of 15 minutes will be provided for the call to the audience agenda item, unless the Air Quality Technical Advisory Committee requests an exception to this limit. Please note that comments received for agenda items posted for action will be read at the time the item is heard. MAG staff, have we received any public comments? And if so, please read them at this time. Madam Chair, we did not receive any public comments. Okay, thank you. Moving on to agenda item number three, approval of the October 28th, 2021 meeting minutes. If I could get an action to, re to uh, approve the October 28th, 2021 meeting minutes. This is John Charles, so moved. This is Ron Gritman, second. Thank you. We have a motion from John Sherrill and a second from Ron Gritman. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, a roll call vote will be taken at this time by Lisa Young. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the committee, when I call your name, please state your vote. Nancy Allen. Stan Ballone? Aye. Thank you. Dave Barry? Ron Gritman? Aye. Thank you. Walter Bouchard? Kim Butler? Aye. Thank you. Derek Costaneda? Beverly Chanowski? Aye. Thank you. Sam Brown? Aye. Thank you. Michael Denby? Aye. Thank you. Scott DeBias? Aye. Thank you. Robert Forrest? Aye. Thank you. Liz Foster? John Woods? Aye. Thank you. Rhonda Humble? Aye. Thank you. Michelle Kamikawa, Spencer Camps, Martin Lucero. Aye. Thank you. Joe Martini, Amanda McGinnis, JC Porter. Aye. Thank you. Danae Pressler. Mario Saldamondo. Hi. Thank you. Megan Sheldon. Hi. Thank you. John Cheryl. Hi. Thank you. Janet Kozinski. Susie Stevens. Hi. Thank you. Kai Umeta. Aye. Thank you. Amy Murray. Abstain. Thank you. Kristen Watt. This is Dina Kanopka. I'm abstaining from voting for Kristen. Thank you, Dina. Michelle Wilson. Aye. Thank you. One moment. Madam Chair, we have 18 ayes and two abstentions. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, the meeting minutes have been approved. Moving on to agenda item number four, the draft MAG 2020 inventory of unpaved roads and Randy Sidlasek from Maricopa Association of Governments will be providing the presentation. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Following is an update on the status of unpaved roads in the Maricopa County PM10 non-attainment area. Next slide, please. A little background. In 2007, the MAG Regional Council directed MAG to develop an unpaved roads inventory for the non-attainment area. 
The primary use of the inventory is to track progress in eliminating unpaved roads. The initial inventory was completed in 2009. During the development of the 2009 inventory, MAG GIS staff analyzed aerial images to identify unpaved roads and then drafted unpaved road maps. These maps were sent to MAG member agencies for review. MAG member agencies sent back these maps with revisions and MAG GIS staff incorporated the revisions in the 2009 inventory. Next slide, please. This slide shows the steps used to update the year 2020 inventory. The unpaved road inventory was updated with unpaved road data from MAG member agencies using tracking spreadsheets, CMAC and TIP paving data, and aerial image analysis and GIS analysis by MAG GIS staff. Next slide, please. Alleys, agricultural roads, canal roads, closed unpaid roads, easements, restricted access roads, and utility roads were not included in the inventory because they have little traffic or the public generally does not have access to these roads. Next slide, please. This slide lists the number of miles of public unpaved roads and private unpaved roads in the non-attainment area in year 2020. It also lists the number of miles of unpaved roads for cities and towns, counties, native nations, and federal land. From the inventory, it was estimated that in year 2020, there were 326 miles of public unpaved roads, 960 miles of private unpaved roads, for a total of 1,286 miles of unpaved roads in the non-attainment area. Next slide, please. Total miles of public unpaved roads decreased 287 miles when compared to the 2009 inventory. The decrease in public unpaved roads was due to paving, closing, blockage, and reclassification of these roads. The decrease in private roads, private unpaved roads was due to paving and reclassification of these roads. In 2011, a MAG contractor conducted an intensive field survey of private unpaved roads in the non-attainment area to identify private unpaved roads that had been misclassified. For example, some canal roads have been misclassified as private unpaved roads. These roads were removed from the inventory. Next slide, please. This map shows a location of public unpaved roads and PM10 monitors in the non-attainment area. Public unpaved roads are denoted as red lines and PM10 monitors as red circles on the map. Review of the map shows that most of the public unpaved roads are on the periphery of the non-attainment area and are not located near PM10 monitors. Next slide, please. This map shows the location of private unpaved roads and PM10 monitors in the non-attainment area. Private unpaved roads are denoted as blue lines and PM10 monitors as red circles on the map. Review of the map shows that most of the private unpaved roads are also on the periphery of the non-attainment area and are not located near the PM10 monitors. Next slide, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. This concludes my presentation. Thank you, Randy, for that presentation. Do I have any questions for Randy? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to agenda item number five. Item number five is the Burn Cleaner, Burn Better Winter Air Pollution Campaign. Ari Helbert of Maricopa County Air Quality Department will be providing the presentation. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. And good afternoon. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Aria Halpert. Um, I am in charge of the Burn Cleaner, Burn Better campaign um, created by Maricopa County Air Quality Department. And this will be a brief presentation with updates about uh, the campaign and how it's running. Next slide, please. So the Burn Cleaner, Burn Better campaign launched November 22nd, the week of Thanksgiving or prior to Thanksgiving. We wanted to change it this year to start a little earlier so we can get ahead of uh, the public's plan to burn wood this season. Uh, with that said, we are promoting our campaign through various um, methods and channels. Our TV buys include channel three and five, that's Arizona Family, channel 12 News and Telemundo for the Spanish community. We are also being streamed on Hubbard Radio. Uh, we have a number of posts on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Nextdoor, and LinkedIn. And um, updates are always uh, available at cleanairmakemore.com. That's our website. The campaign is also being promoted on the light rail wrap, uh, thanks to Valley Metro. Uh, we released a news release and a partnership video that I will show at the end of this presentation when we launched the campaign. We've also had community newsletters, virtual presentations. We have grocery store signage with weekly ads and in-house radio. Uh, no burn days are uh, announced on the ADOT signs. Uh, we've also been at the, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, presented at the Phoenix Water Bill. And at the end of the campaign, we will have a survey with results from this campaign. Next slide, please. So TV and radio has been a little bit different this year. We're doing over the top streaming. We've also included web page takeovers, um, targeted audience, meaning uh, the campaign is being streamed and promoted to Maricopa County residents specifically. We've also had a number of interview segments in both English and in Spanish. Our banner are, banners are displayed on uh, the TVs and radios websites. And we decided to stream, to concentrate most of our streaming on the weeks leading up to major holidays. Again, to get ahead of people's plan to burn wood so we can share our message and have people understand what a no burn day is. Next slide, please. Oh, and this is a video a spot 15 seconds from channel three and five. It has sound, <laughs> can't hear it right now. Next slide, please. Um, our social media has been um, a major focal point in this campaign for um, the month of December. So we've started increasing the number of posts, uh, it's daily posts. We've also bought Facebook boosts to increase the number of impressions, uh, next door ads, LinkedIn ads, Twitter ads, and we've shared posts with other agencies and have had them tag us to increase uh, the number of impressions. Um, as you can see on this chart here, um, the number of impressions for just our social media for Maricopa County Air Quality Department, um, is that's the number of impressions we've received just from the start of the campaign. Now the end of the campaign is January 2nd and we will update these numbers uh, once we get to that point. Next slide, please. These are some examples of our social media, both in English and in Spanish. Uh, we wanted to make it more educational this, this time around so people, the Maricopa County residents understand the importance of not burning wood on no burn days and why it is that we um, issue no burn days. Next slide, please. We've also purchased Google ads. So when the public searches for no burn day, as you can see here, um, the what our website is first to show up uh, also with educational material. Um, and it's been uh, very beneficial so far in this campaign. Next slide, please. Uh, additionally, 
probably. <laughs> Uh, additional uh, sources and platforms, uh, like I said, we have the light rail wrap that runs from December 6th to January 6th. Um, ADOT signs advertise no burn days. Uh, the Burn Cleaner, Burn Better campaign was featured in the City of Phoenix water bill. Bashes grocery stores uh, run our campaign and on, they stream ads on their digital screens located at cash registers. Uh, social media posts shared by other private and government agencies have also been beneficial this time around, and we hope to, to really see a, an increase in impressions thanks to that this year. Next slide. The fireplace retrofit and propane fire pit programs have been heavily featured on social media posts. Uh, the Maricopa County Fireplace Retrofit Program helps qualifying residents retrofit wood burning fireplaces with a gas lock set. The Maricopa County County Propane Fire Pit Program offers qualifying residents a $75 voucher for the purchase of propane of a propane fire pit in participating Home Depot stores. Uh, next slide, please. So what's next in our campaign? We're gonna continue a heavy TV radio broadcasting the week before major holidays, that is Christmas and New Year's Eve coming up. Uh, continue to use the social media boosts and ads. We've noticed that um, purchasing ads on Nextdoor as a platform has really helped us gain a lot more um, attention from the public and participation and a lot more um, people signing up for our programs like the fireplace retrofit and propane fire pit programs. Uh, we will be extending the life of purchase Google ads. And we ask um, everyone, members of the public to help us promote burn cleaner, burn better. Uh, share us on your social media, post a video or image using a propane gas or gas fuel burning device and tag us. And next slide. Um, so if you would like to follow us and tag us, this is, uh, these are our social media platforms in both English and in Spanish. Uh, feel free to follow us and tag us so we can um, share our message with a greater uh, population. Next slide. This is uh, the partnership video that we launched along the press release when we launched the campaign on November 22nd. This was in lieu of having um, an actual conference um, and having it uh, be safer due to COVID-19. And we thought this was a good way of showing um, our partners and how they helped us uh, promote the Burn Cleaner, Burn Better campaign. So if you could play this. Are you gonna want me to share the audio for this video as well? Yes, could you? Yeah. All right, yeah, I'll have to stop sharing first and then I'll share it again. Okay, thank you. There you go, can you see that? Yes. The Maricopa County Air Quality Department has partnered with local businesses, community organizations, government agencies, and residents of Maricopa County to educate the greater community about air pollution caused by smoke during the holidays. One of this year's partners is the Phoenix Suns Gorilla, who will pass the ball to all those on the pollution reduction team this season. air pollution, the Burn Cleaner, Burn Better campaign has been launched to encourage cleaner burning alternatives instead of wood and to always abide by no burn days. solution to help our families and neighbors breathe cleaner air. Now the ball is in your court. How will you help reduce air pollution? So that's it. Um, we just wanted to say thank you to our partners America and everyone that has helped us um, launch this campaign. And we will be sending you updates once we wrap it up. If you guys have any questions, feel free to contact me. My information is on screen. Thank you. That presentation. Is there any questions from the committee? Um, 
Madam Chair, this is Sam Brown, uh, City of Scottsdale. Um, I had, uh, since uh, November, been receiving initially anonymous texts about no burn days. And uh, uh, within Scottsdale, I issue HPA um, advisories uh, to city employees and contractors. But I was very confused about these texts. Uh, a no burn day has been issued, et cetera, with no reference to um, who, um, who was issuing that text. And I would go to ADEQ and uh, see that there was, uh, you know, the AQI uh, index, uh, nothing, there was no HPA. And eventually those texts had um, a link to clean air make more, but uh, it would say a PM10 dust, no burn day. Uh, so, but my point was very confusing to somebody who um, needs to officially alert uh, their community about, um, say, an advisory, a health advisory. And I just wonder if there was anybody within this meeting that could clarify um, those texts, the source or the purpose for those. Uh, initially, I thought they were spam after checking all the official websites. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, I can answer that question, sure. if I may. Um, so this year, we're doing things a little bit differently due to our more stricter ordinance for Maricopa County. Uh, the Maricopa County Air Quality Department issues no burn days when we reach um, concentrations of either PM10 or PM2.5 of 83 or 85 respectively. And this differs from ADQ where they, they issue HPA or high pollution advisories when their uh, pollutant concentrations reach over hundred for both PM10 and PM2.5, that is dust and smoke. Now, um, the change is due to um, Maricopa County having to be stricter with um, thresholds and our ordinances. So those texts that you received are automated uh, for those that have signed up for our gov delivery. Um, you should receive an email as well as a text. Um, you can opt out of those um, once our cleanermakemore.com website uh, it links directly to our air quality index to receive um, updates of uh, forecasts, uh, restrictions, et cetera. Um, you are able to opt out of those. Uh, we just send those out automatically if you have signed up with us. Um, but you can contact me directly if you'd like to opt out of those. And um, to finally answer your question, yes, uh, no burn days and high pollution advisories are different now. Um, a no burn day will be called in Maricopa County, not necessarily when um, ADQ does, uh, sorry. When ADQ issues a high pollution advisory, we will issue a no burn day, but that doesn't mean that we will not issue a no burn day if they don't call a high pollution advisory. I don't know if I just confused you more. But <laughs> um, it, it's a little confusing. We, we just uh, have stricter rules here uh, for our department. Okay, and thank you. Uh, it, that was helpful. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, my name is John Woods. So on a, on a no burn day, that's not a high pollution advisory day. Will we still follow dust action protocols? Yes, on a no burn day, uh, you would have to follow those. It depends on if it's dust or smoke. 
Um, either way, you would not be allowed to burn wood and you would still have to follow dust and um, wood burning restrictions. Thank you. <laughs> welcome. Do we have any other questions? Thank you, Ari, for your presentation and for, for answering those questions for us. Okay, we're gonna move on to agenda item number six, which is the update on the 2022 serious area particular plan for the West Pinal County non-attainment area. The presentation will be by Matt Poppin of the Maricopa Association of Government. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Uh, next slide, please. So again, it's important for us to remember the background of why we're uh, doing this plan and how we got to this point. So initially, EPA had designated the West Pinal PM10 non-attainment area as a moderate area, and that was effective on July 2nd, 2012. In response to that designation, the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality, Quality prepared a moderate area plan um, for that and submitted it to EPA on December 21st, 2015. The attainment date for that plan and for that area was December 31st, 2018. On June 24th, 2020, EPA published a final rule to determine that the West Pinal non-attainment area failed to meet the PM10 standard by the December 31st, 2018 attainment date, and the area was reclassified to a serious area from a moderate area. The effective date of that was July 24th, 2020. Um, a serious area plan is due within 18 months of the reclassification date, which is January 24th, 2022. Next slide, please. Additionally, there has been some additional regulatory action since that time, uh, beginning with on January 8th, 2021, EPA published a proposed rule to approve in part and disimprove in part the 2015 West Pinal Moderate Area Plan submitted and prepared by the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. Uh, separately, on February 26, 2021, EPA published, it, published a limited approval and limited disapproval of a revision to the SIP regarding agricultural best management practices that designed to address the moderate area, moderate non-attainment area requirements of that uh, of West Pinal County non-attainment area for agricultural sources. In response to these, on May 17, 2021, the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality withdrew the 2015 moderate area SIP. Next slide, please. So with the withdrawal by ADEQ, EPA published a finding of failure to submit a state implementation plan to meet the moderate area requirements. And that, uh, publication was effective August 23rd, 2021. Um, associated with that effective date are, are a couple of clocks that were triggered. Um, the first clock is the imposi imposition of emission offset sanctions if the state does not submit a complete moderate area plan by February 23rd, 2023. Additionally, there can be imposition of highway sanctions if the state does not submit a complete moderate area plan by August 23rd, 2023. And lastly, uh, the EPA could promulgate a FIP if the EPA does not approve the state's moderate area plan submission by August 23rd, 2023. Um, EPA has indicated to us that submission of a complete serious area PM10 plan, which is what we're working on currently, that addresses all of the moderate area requirements will turn off these sanctions clocks. Uh, EPA approval of the complete serious area PM10 plan that again addresses all moderate area requirements will stop promulgation of a federal implementation plan. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the update I'm going to be providing today on the work we've been doing is going to be focused primarily on attainment modeling. So again, I want to review some of the aspects that are required for attainment modeling. 
Um, the Sirius Area PM10 plan must include modeling that demonstrates attainment of the PM10 standard at all PM10 monitors within the non-attainment area. In order to do, to do this, design days are selected, which are specific PM10 exceedance days that are representative of the conditions that currently cause exceedances to occur within the non-attainment area. Those design day PM10 concentrations must be reduced to the level of the PM10 standard through modeling of the PM10 emission reduction benefits of the committed controls that are included in the plan in order to demonstrate attainment of the standard. Next slide, please. So within the non-attainment area, PM10 exceedances occur under three conditions. We've discussed these before, but I just wanna briefly go through them again. We have low wind conditions. That's when wind speeds are less than 12 miles per hour. On these days, the PM10 emissions are from source activities and there's no wind blown dust emissions occurring. We have elevated wind days when wind speeds are greater than 12 miles per hour, but are less than 25 miles per hour. So PM10 emissions during those hours are primarily caused by wind blown dust. And then lastly, we have high wind dust events where wind speeds are 25 miles per hour or greater. Uh, these days would normally be considered uh, candidates for exceptional event demonstrations and the emissions associated with these days are considered to be uncontrollable. So on days when wind speeds are 25 miles per hour or greater, we, we, we do not select those days as design days. Um, PM10 exceedances can occur under a combination as well of low wind and elevated wind conditions. So uh, part of the day could have high PM10 concentrations associated with low wind, and then the other part of the day could be elevated wind conditions. Uh, when this occurs, we're uh, grouping those exceedances in the elevated wind category. And again, we're, we have design days for both categories so that we can demonstrate to EPA that attainment will be uh, demonstrated under all possible conditions that are currently causing exceedances. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, briefly again, design days will not be selected for PM10 monitors that are not violating the PM10 standard. So, Looking at current monitoring data, we really only have three monitors that violate the PM10 standard after you remove high wind dust events. That's the Hidden Valley Monitor, um, the Pinal County Housing Monitor, and the Stanfield Monitor, three of the eight monitors. The other five monitors appear to be attaining the standard or are attaining the standard when you remove high wind dust events. Um, for those monitors uh, that we aren't selecting design days for, EPA recommends that we uh, address those monitors by describing whether the emissions inventories at each of those monitors or the areas around those monitors are expected to increase or decrease and how that would affect future attainment status. And then again, some overarching guidance that EPA has on design days. EPA generally recommends that the fourth highest PM10 concentration out of a three year period uh, be considered when you look at design days. And again, this is to, in, this is to ensure that um, the form of the PM10 standard, which is no more than three exceedances in a three year period is able to be demonstrated by selecting that at least the fourth highest concentration is modeled. Next slide, please. So initially we did share uh, eight of our uh, selected design days with EPA and we did get some feedback from them that some of the design days selected at Hidden Valley and Stanfield monitors may not be conservative enough to demonstrate attainment at these monitors under all of the conditions. So to address EPA feedback, we have um, replaced three of the eight originally selected design days with uh, three days that have higher PM10 concentrations. EPA has since reviewed those three replacement design days and has indicated to us that those design day selections are, are reasonable. Next slide, please. So here's a summary of the eight design days that are uh, now being modeled for inclusion and in the attainment modeling demonstration. So again, we only have three monitors that are really um, violating the PM10 standard. When, when high wind dust events are removed, we've got Hidden Valley, Pinal County Housing and Stamfield. And so for Hidden Valley, we have two low wind days and two elevated wind days. Uh, the reason why two low wind days were selected for Hidden Valley is we have 
uh, kind of seasonal effects that are observed at Hidden Valley. Most of the low wind exceedances occur in the summer months or in the fall months. So we selected a, a design day out of a summer month and out of a, out of a fall month. And then with elevated winds, we see kind of two ways that exceedances occur. We have low pressure systems or storm fronts where kind of big storms move through the entire county um, that raise PM10 concentrations. And then we have our thunderstorm uh, days. These can be uh, monsoon days or days uh, associated with isolated thunderstorms, a little more location specific, uh, but they also have winds that are strong enough to cause exceedances as well. So we have one for each of those wind types. For Pinal County housing, we only have one low wind day. Pinal County housing is it was very close to already attaining the standard um, when you remove high wind dust event days. So really, only one day needed to be needed to be modeled for that monitor. And then Stanfield had uh, much more uh, less low wind violations than Hidden Valley, so only one day needed to be selected. And then uh, similar to Hidden Valley, we have two elevated wind days, one a thunderstorm day and one a low pressure system day. Um, in, the, in the rightmost column, you can see the uh, three days that were replaced. Um, so June 15th, 2017 is a new day. It has a 24 hour PM10 concentration of 251 micrograms and it replaced uh, June 7th, 2017 that had a lower concentration of 217. Uh, similarly, with July 16th and for Stanfield and June 18th uh, for Stanfield, uh, you can see those two days have higher PM10 concentrations than the former design days. Uh, next slide, please. So we have uh, uh, contracted with Trinity Consultants to perform the attainment modeling for these eight selected design days. Uh, the reductions in design day PM10 concentrations are the result of modeling the committed control measures in the PM10 plan um, that were committed to by the Pinal County Board of Supervisors and um, ADEQ and the um, Agricultural Best Management Practices Committee. So attainment modeling was performed using a combination of the EPA air mod dispersion model for low wind activity-based PM10 concentrations as well as the emissions rollback technique for elevated wind, windblown uh, dust PM10 concentrations. Next slide, please. Um, so the good news is that attainment can be uh, demonstrated for all eight days uh, in the year 2027. This is a, a full five-year extension of the attainment date. Again, the PM10 standard is 150 micrograms, so values need to be uh, at that or lower in order to demonstrate attainment. Um, so you can see the far column on the right is what is anticipated the PM10 concentrations will be once all of the controls in the plan are fully implemented. So all of those concentration values are below the PM10 standard and attainment can be uh, shown with the controls that are included in the plan, which is a really, uh, really fabulous thing. Um, additionally, uh, we are also currently modeling 2026 to verify whether attainment can be demonstrated earlier than 2027. Um, if we can show that um, attainment is possible in 2026, that would be the, um, the year for the um, extension request instead of 2027 because EPA, while they will grant an extension under certain conditions, they do want you to um, attain the standard as expeditiously as practicable. So if attainment can be demonstrated in 2026, that would be the uh, proposed attainment year instead of 2027. Uh, next slide, please. So moving on from now that the attainment modeling um, has largely been complete, uh, we're able to address some other um, requirements that are that need to be in the uh, plan and one of those is reasonable further progress and associated milestones so the clean air act section 172 requires the inclusion of reasonable further progress in all non-attainment area plans uh, this is known as rfp so rfp is met by demonstrating incremental reductions in pm10 emissions from the 2017 base year until the attainment year again that will likely be 2026 or 2027 Additionally, associated with that, the Clean Air Act uh, Section 189C requires that plan revisions demonstrating attainment 
contain quantitative milestones, which are to be achieved every three years until the area is redesignated attainment and which also help to demonstrate that reasonable further progress. If 2027 remains the attainment year, milestones will be included for the year 2024 and 2027 based upon reasonable further progress calculations. Uh, next slide, please. So this graph shows the reasonable further progress uh, calculations that um, are based on the committed controls in the plan. Um, we have 2017, that's our base year emissions inventory. So we have 41,157 tons of PM10 that, is, that are emitted per year in the non-attainment area in our base year of 2017. And then you can see the gradual improvement or decrease in emissions all the way up until the attainment year of 2027. Um, for years 2018 through 2021, emissions are decreasing based upon the moderate area controls that are still currently in effect. And then beginning with year 2022, you start to see the effect of the controls that are committed to in the serious area plan that we will, we will be submitting. So that's why you start to see a drop in 2022. Um, and then you see a drop again in 2024 when some of the additional um, commitments made by Pinal County come online for, for things like unpaved roads. Um, so what this graph is showing is that we are um, able to demonstrate reasonable further progress. We're, we're getting reductions in emissions every year up until our attainment year. And so our milestones would be for if we have 2027 as our attainment year, we'll want to show that emissions in 2020 or 33,613 tons or less. And similarly, for 2024, once we get there, we'll want to show that emissions are 35,880 tons or less. So those will be the two milestones that we will be uh, wanting to, uh, to mark reasonable further progress with. Uh, next slide, please. Lastly, I also want to talk about contingency measures. These are different from the committed measures that um, have already been uh, submitted to MAG for inclusion in the plan. In addition to those measures, Clean Air Act Section 172 C9 requires that non-attainment area plans provide for the implementation of contingency measures if the administrator finds that the non-attainment area has failed to make reasonable further progress toward attainment or actually attain the standard by the attainment date. Um, EPA recommends that contingency measures provide the emission reductions equivalent to one year's average increment of reasonable further progress. So based upon that graph that I just showed, one year's uh, worth of one year's increment of reasonable further progress reductions is 754.39 tons. So uh, in, in the year 2028. So the contingency measures um, will need to show that they reduce emissions by 754.39 tons in order to meet EPA's uh, recommended guidance. Additionally, I just want to point out again that contingencies measures may not be ever triggered. Um, they only get triggered if we fail to meet attainment by the attainment date or those emission reductions associated with reasonable further progress um, are not met. So they could sit in abeyance waiting to be triggered, uh, or they do sit in abeyance waiting to be triggered until one of those two things happens. Uh, next slide, please. So um, some discussions with the Pinal County Air Quality Control District and the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality on the, on the identification of contingency measures have been initiated. Um, we are very excited that the Pinal County Air Quality Control District has identified a possible contingency measure, and that measure would be to lower the speed limits on public unpaved roads from 25 miles per hour to 15 miles per hour. So we were very excited that they came up with that contingency measure that they're looking at. So in initial evaluations of this, uh, of the PM10 emission reduction benefits that would be uh, associated with this possible contingency measure indicate that measure would reduce PM10 emissions by 875 tons in the year 2028, which exceeds that 754 ton threshold that we previously identified in the earlier slide. So kind of the next steps that Pinal County is going to do is they anticipate developing a, a resolution 
uh, committing to that contingency measure for presentation to the Pinal County Board of Supervisors in early 22. So they're still going through that process. Next steps, or next slide, please. So my, my next slide is next steps. Um, so this is, I want, we wanted to give you an update on where we are with the timing with submission of this plan. So um, when the contingency measure resolution is received by MAG, it, it will be uh, then included in the draft 2022 series area particulate plan. So we're still not sure when that would exactly be, but hopefully that would be in early uh, 2022. Additionally, uh, Trinity consultants, in, in addition to um, doing the attainment modeling, they're also preparing the, uh, the plan document with the information we have uh, received to date. Um, and once that is complete, once we have a complete draft plan, that draft plan will then be available for a 30-day public review period. And during that time, if any, any comments that are received by the, by the public will be responded to in a response to comments uh, documented document. And then we will, after that point, we will share the response to comments and the draft plan with this committee. And the committee may at that point then make a recommendation to the MAG Management Committee. Uh, the next steps in the process are the MAG Management Committee would make a recommendation as well, and then ultimately MAG Regional Council may adopt the plan, and then after MAG, MAG Regional Council adoption, the plan can be submitted to ADQ and EPA. So at this point, uh, um, we will not be able to submit the plan by the January 24th, 2022 deadline, given these additional steps that we um, we, we need to take to, to get it complete. So we did want to make the committee aware of that. Um, there have been a lot of additional emissions work that has been needed and as well as um, some of the work with EPA on identifying appropriate um, design days that have uh, delayed um, completing this really complex plan as well. But we wanted to make the committee aware of that of where we are with scheduling. Uh, next slide. So that completes my presentation at this time. I'm available for any questions the committee may have. Thank you, Matt. Are there any questions from the committee? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to agenda item number seven. Agenda item number seven is EPA's proposed rule to approve the base year emissions inventory in the MAG 2020 eight hour ozone plan submittal of marginal area requirements. The presentation will be by Lindy Bauer of the Maricopa Association of Governments. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. We're pleased to report to the committee that on October 22nd, 2021, the Environmental Protection Agency published a proposed rule in the Federal Register to approve the 2017 base year emissions inventory in the MAG 2020 eight hour ozone plan submittal of marginal area requirements. Now this base year emissions inventory is for the 2015 ozone standard. According to the notice, EPA found that the submittal contained a comprehensive, accurate, current inventory of actual emissions from all sources. The notice also indicated that the MAG 2020 eight-hour ozone plan submittal of marginal area requirements became complete by operation of law on January 8, 2021. So this is good news, and we wanted to report this to the committee and provide you with the Federal Register notice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lindy. Do we have any questions on this item? Okay, hearing none. We will move on to agenda item number eight, and that is a tentative meeting schedule for the MAG Air Quality Technical Advisory Committee uh, for the 2022 calendar year. And the presentation will be by Lindy Bauer of the Maricopa Association of Government. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. We just wanted to provide the committee with a tentative meeting schedule so that you have it for 2022. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Agenda item number nine is a request for future agenda items. If there are any topics or issues of interest to the Air Quality Technical Advisory Committee um, that you would like to have considered for discussion at a future meeting, uh, you can make such requests right now. So are there any requests by membership for an item on a future agenda? Okay, hearing none, uh, that wraps up our agenda. So if I could get a motion to adjourn. So moved, Martin City Surprise. Thank you, Martin. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. And business is now concluded, so we are adjourning the meeting. Thank you.